Falcon 9's folding carbon fiber landing legs are one of the most iconic images of modern spaceflight. For many people, they represent the exact moment rockets stopped being disposable and started behaving like machines. So when SpaceX revealed Starship without any visible landing legs, the immediate reaction was confusion. If Falcon 9 legs work so well, why not reuse the same idea? Why abandon a proven system that has landed hundreds of times successfully? On the surface, it feels like SpaceX threw away something that already worked. But once you understand what Starship actually is, you realize Falcon 9 style legs don't just fail to help Starship, they actively work against it. Falcon 9 was designed around its landing legs from the very beginning. The entire lower section of the rocket, including the octaweb structure that houses the engines, was engineered to tolerate bending loads. When Falcon 9 lands, it doesn't land straight down like a pencil balancing on its tip. The legs extend far outward, creating a wide base. That means the forces from landing don't travel purely straight up through the engine thrust axis. Instead, they create sideways loads, torque, and bending moments. Falcon 9 survives this because its structure was built specifically to handle those stresses. It's a compromise, but a very deliberate one. That compromise works because Falcon 9 lands relatively light. By the time it touches down, most of its propellant is gone. Its landing mass is typically around 25 to 30 tons. It lands on a single engine at low thrust with very precise control and minimal horizontal velocity. The center of mass is low, and the vehicle is narrow enough that even if it leans slightly, the forces stay within what the structure can tolerate. The legs also include crush cores and shock-absorbing elements that soften the touchdown. All of this gives Falcon 9 flexibility. It can land on a drone ship in rough seas or on a concrete pad without needing millimeter-level precision. Starship exists in a completely different world. At landing, Starship can still weigh well over 100 tons. It is nearly 9 meters in diameter and dramatically taller than Falcon 9. Its propellant tanks stack huge masses high above the engine bay, pushing the center of mass upward. This single fact changes everything. When a tall, heavy vehicle touches down on legs, even a small tilt creates enormous leverage. One leg contacting slightly early or slightly harder than the others would transmit massive bending loads into the lower structure. The skirt and thrust section would have to absorb forces they were never meant to handle. To survive those forces, Starship would need extensive reinforcement around the leg attachment points. That reinforcement wouldn't be optional, it would be structural necessity. Thicker steel, internal load-spreading structures, stronger hinges, larger crush cores, and a much wider stance would all be required. Every one of those changes adds mass, and on Starship, mass is the one thing you cannot afford to add casually. Starship is designed around the idea that every kilogram must justify its existence. If it doesn't directly help deliver payload to orbit or support rapid reuse, it's a liability. Scaling Falcon 9's landing legs to Starship's size would likely add somewhere between 10 and 15 tons of dead weight. That's not a guess pulled from thin air, it's what structural scaling laws demand when you increase loads by several times. 10 tons of landing legs means 10 tons less payload, or 10 tons less fuel margin, or both. That directly undermines Starship's entire purpose. Starship isn't meant to barely reach orbit, it's meant to deliver massive payloads cheaply and frequently. There's also the issue of inspection and turnaround. Falcon 9's legs are reusable, but they aren't maintenance-free. After landing, engineers inspect hinges, locks, and structural members. They check for cracks, deformation, and damage to crush course. That's acceptable when you're flying boosters every few weeks. Starship's goal is something entirely different. SpaceX wants Starship to land, refuel, and fly again with minimal downtime. Every moving part you add is another thing that needs inspection, repair, or replacement. Falcon 9 legs multiply complexity. They don't reduce it. Then there's landing precision. Falcon 9's legs are forgiving. They allow the booster to touch down with a small amount of lateral error or tilt. That forgiveness is exactly what makes them unsuitable for Starship. A vehicle as tall and massive as Starship cannot tolerate that kind of imprecision. A slight lean at touchdown could cause engines to scrape the ground, induce twisting loads through the thrust structure, or overload one side of the vehicle. With legs, the margin for error shrinks dramatically as the vehicle grows taller and heavier. 
Instead of designing Starship to land imprecisely, SpaceX chose the opposite strategy. They designed a system that demands extreme precision but rewards it with simplicity. Starship's landing approach aims to keep forces aligned with the thrust axis, the direction the vehicle is naturally strongest in. That's why the catch system exists. By having the launch tower's arms grab Starship at structural hardpoints, SpaceX eliminates bending loads almost entirely. The forces flow straight into the vehicle's strongest load paths. In that scenario, landing legs become unnecessary. This is where many people misunderstand the catch system. It's not a gimmick or a shortcut. It's a deliberate choice to move complexity off the vehicle and onto the ground. The tower can be massive, heavy, and over-engineered because it doesn't fly. Starship benefits by staying lighter, simpler, and more efficient. In effect, the launch tower becomes Starship's landing gear. That might seem risky at first, but it aligns perfectly with SpaceX's long-term goals of high launch cadence and rapid reuse. There's another subtle advantage here. Falcon 9 legs allow landings anywhere the rocket can physically reach. That flexibility is valuable when recovery locations are scattered across oceans. Starship, at least for Earth operations, doesn't need that flexibility. It's designed to return to highly controlled, purpose-built sites. That allows SpaceX to trade flexibility for performance. When you control the environment, you can simplify the vehicle. Mars is often raised as the counterpoint. There's no tower on Mars, so how can Starship land there without Falcon 9-style legs? The key insight is that Earth Starship and Mars Starship are likely not identical. A Mars-bound Starship may include deployable landing legs designed for low gravity and rough terrain. It may only need to land once or a few times. It does not need daily reuse. Earth-based Starships, on the other hand, are optimized for launch cadence and payload efficiency. What works for Mars does not automatically make sense for Earth. This highlights an important shift in how SpaceX thinks about rockets. Falcon 9 was designed in an era when landing a rocket even once was revolutionary. Starship is being designed for an era where rockets are expected to behave like aircraft or industrial machines. Landing legs made sense when reuse was rare and experimental. Starship assumes reuse is routine. That assumption changes every design decision. When you put all of this together, the reason Starship can't reuse Falcon 9-style folding carbon legs becomes obvious. The mass penalty is too high. The structural loads are wrong for the vehicle. The inspection burden conflicts with rapid reuse. The tolerance they provide is unnecessary and even dangerous for a vehicle of Starship's size. And most importantly, Starship's entire architecture is built around thrust-aligned loads, not bending loads from wide stance landings. Falcon 9's legs solved Falcon 9's problem set brilliantly. They do not solve Starship's problem set at all. Starship is not a bigger Falcon 9. It's a different class of vehicle. It's part of an integrated system where infrastructure and rocket are designed together. That's why landing legs, despite their success, were left behind. If you've made it this far, you're clearly serious about spaceflight, so make sure to like the video, subscribe for more deep technical breakdowns, and follow us on Facebook, where we post daily SpaceX updates, launch alerts, and behind-the-scenes analysis. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are landing legs a stepping stone we've outgrown, or do you think Starship will eventually bring them back in some form?